Hey guys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and talk about Maya's user interface. And let's talk a bit about how we can begin to customize it more towards what type of workflow we're interested in. But we're also just gonna review what defaults uh, Maya comes with as far as the menu setups and options. So let's go ahead and go up to the display menu. Under the UI elements tab, you're gonna see two double lines next to them. If you click on that, it's going to create a detached copy of that menu, which basically allows us to just place it wherever we'd like and have immediate access to it. So let's go ahead and hide all of the UI elements first. And here what you end up seeing is you get a full canvas basically to work within your 3D space or whatever viewport you'd like to have. Um, that's you know very, very helpful when you're really tight for real estate. Um, it's, it's important to remove any of the menus that you're not going to be using because that, this allows for a, a little bit of a better workflow. Let's go ahead and turn on the status line and let's have a look at what menu options we have here. So from the get-go you notice you have file, edit, modify, etc. You have a lot of different menu options up top. Directly below that there's a tab with a little drop-down arrow which has different menu sets for each of the Maya modules, basically. So, as you know, Maya is an incredibly in-depth program, so you could do things from rigging, to animating, to rendering, to dynamics, to modeling, uh, or you could do all, of, you know, there's, there's any number of things that you could do within this program. So, basically, Maya is set it up so that each menu set that corresponds with each type of format is contained within each one of them. So, for example, if we go to the animation, you notice that part of the menus change, but others stay the same. So, pretty much from file to asset will always be the same. That will never change. Everything to the right of assets will be specific to each menu set. So, if we switch to polygons, we notice that there's a new set of menu options that correspond to polygons. If we switch to end dynamics, you see that there's a, now a new set of menu options that we have access to as well. So let's go ahead and move down next to the menu set and have a look at the icons that we have here. So if you hover over these, you'll get a little uh, window that tells you what each one of them does. So for example, here we can set a new scene, open a scene, or save a scene. We could also go up to file any of the menus up here, file and do new scene, open scene, or save scene. So like I mentioned, Maya gives you a lot of different ways to do the same thing, which is really helpful. Uh, it basically allows for you to determine what you want your workflow to be and set it up accordingly. So let's continue along. These little vertical lines, if you click on any one of these, you can either expand or compress the menu in. These first two here, if you hover over these, one is for uh, selection of component mode or object mode, which we're going to get into a bit later on. Um, these here are your filters. So here you can either turn on and off filters for surfaces, meshes, um, basically filter out what you want to be able to select and what you don't want to be able to select. We also have snaps here, grid snaps, vertex snaps and rendering options with the settings as well as the render uh, window. And here you have XYZ inputs that you can enter either set to uh, relative mode or to absolute mode, which we'll talk about those a bit later as well. So let's go ahead and turn on our shelf tab. And so you notice right away that once you press it, a new set of tabs open up here. And these are commonly used commands that Maya stores in a shelf for you. So for example, I can click on the polygons and click on the polygon cube and it will create a cube. The same way as if I went up to the polygons tab and did create polygon primitives cube. And it would do the same thing. So once again, this is another way that Maya allows us to have uh, more customization uh, based on commands that we use more often. You can create your own tabs uh, or you can edit these as well. So if you work your way over to the left, you click the little down arrow. You can Here's where you can delete shelves, you can create a new shelf, you can open the shelf editor, 
and edit some of these. You can create your own. So I can have a shelf here and basically start adding my commands to them. Or I can delete it. So this is another way to have more access to the same commands. So let's go ahead and talk about the hotbox really quickly while we're here. And we'll get more in depth into the hotbox later, but if you press and hold your middle or your spacebar, sorry, you get your hotbox and it pops up wherever your mouse is. So as long as you press and hold it, if you just tap the spacebar, you will get your four viewports. So what we want to do is just press and hold it and let's have a look at what we have. And you can see that in the top bar, you have your same menus as you do by default in the top of Maya's uh, screen as well. But if you press and hold and you go down, here you can see your menu bar, which is located right here as well. And if you go down further, you see that you actually have a, what looks like a combination of menu sets. And that's because the hotbox allows you to customize what your... Um, what menu sets you want to have open at once. So if you go to the hotbox controls and you press and hold it, you can either hide all of them or you can show all of them or you can actually just, you could say I want to show, I want to hide all and I want to show polygons. You can do only or you can show polygons and then continue to add other ones that you want to add uh, at the moment. So if you want to say, okay, show dynamics, then you do dynamics as well right here and now you have both of them together so it's a nice way that you don't have to go up to uh, the tab here and change your menu sets to get different menu access you can actually just go to the hotbox itself and press and hold the hotbox control so one more step you press and hold the spacebar go to hotbox control press and hold with the left mouse button and here you can specify so I'll show all in this case we can see all of the menu sets for each one of the modules. So here, you know, we can see the edit polygon mesh, and you pr you press and hold these, and you get these menus. You can also detach these as well. So Hotbox is a really great uh, tool. You can also use the switch between your viewports. If you press and hold your left mouse button uh, over the Maya. You can go to your front view, you can go to your side view, perspective view. So you can do a lot of different things with the, uh, with the hotbox. You can also uh, control your UI elements from the hotbox. So it's divided up in regions here. So if you go to the top right region and you press and hold your left mouse button. By the way, we're doing this as we're holding the space bar as well. Uh, if you press and hold the mouse button, then you can go into your tool settings. You can go into turn on the command line, turn on the help line, shelf, which you notice are all things that are in your UI elements uh, tab as well. So, yeah, the hotbox is really great. And uh, once you get more familiar, we'll begin to talk a little bit more about uh, what each of the different regions do and how we can uh, use a hotbox towards our advantage. So let's work our way down to the time slider now. So the time slider and the range slider, they kind of go hand in hand. And these are specifically for animations. And so each one of these little tick marks is basically a frame. And here's where you can input your keyframes. Uh, then the range slider allows you to specify the length of your time slider. And basically what, what uh, frames you want to display and you can switch back and forth between those as well. So let's go ahead and turn on the command line and the help line. And here you see them at the bottom, the MEL, that's Maya's embedded language. And here is the command line where you can enter your MEL command. And the help line is down here at the bottom which gives you tips. So if we go to the toolbox now and we click on that, here's where we have our selection, our move, rotate, and scale options lasso selection as well as paint selection and if you double click on any of these you'll get the tool settings for the select tool the move tool the rotate tool and the scale tool 
so this is something that's very useful when you're specifying uh, rotation axes or uh, translation axes as well, as well as a slew of other tools that we have access to. So that's something that we'll get into a bit later. And then if you continue down, here's where you can start to see your panel layout. So if you hover over these, it gives you different options. So this is the single viewport. This is the four viewport. Here is the viewport with the outliner, et cetera, et cetera. So you have different options to customize these as you'd like. So if we continue along here to the attribute editor, and let me actually make, let me just put a cube here. So the attribute editor, you can access it by hitting control A. So that'll toggle between the attribute editor, the channel box, and the layer editor, which we're gonna get into right after this. So let's talk about the attribute editor first. And you can actually detach this window if you'd like. I actually just keep it here and I hit control A or you can just reattach it back on by double clicking it. So for in order to see attributes, you have to have an object selected because it's the attributes of that object. So what does the attributes contain? So we have the very first one, which is the translate node, which we'll get into a bit later as well. The second one is the shape node. So the translate node contains information about its rotation, its scale, its translations, as well as pivots and display information, where the uh, shape node contains the attributes for the mesh, basically the components, which you can see here, the smooth mesh previews, uh, the tessellations. The polycube, this is the creation node. Because our history is still on, uh, and we'll talk a bit about history later because it's, it's important to kind of manage how you work with history. But the creation node basically specifies what, you know, the width, the height, the depth, the amount of subdivisions. And as long as you haven't made uh, any, you know, any changes to the primitive that you created because it's still a primitive, you're able to adjust uh, these to change them to whatever size you'd want. So... You know, in this case, you could switch it like this. You could add number of subdivisions, et cetera, et cetera. And if we continue over and we go to the far right, here we can see our basic material node. And we'll talk about materials later on as well, but this is one of the other uh, attributes that we have access to in the attribute editors. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And like I mentioned earlier, the tool settings. So you can either click this here and have it open as well. I actually have set up a hotkey for these uh, because it's very commonly used because you always have to specify which axis you want to be moving along. If you want to use the normals, the averages. Um, so I always have this um, as something I can just open very quickly. So you can either press the tool settings here or you can uh, double click whichever, whichever one of the tools you'd like and it'll give you the tool settings for that specific tool. And so another, another trick actually, um, instead of doing the hide all UI and then show all, you can actually do control spacebar, and that will uh, swing you over to a full screen mode. And you can do the back and it'll retain whatever information you had there before. Another thing you might have noticed is these little green brackets that you might have noticed in some of the menus. Uh, this is Maya's way of letting you know what's new in 2014 and what, uh, what new commands or what new methods they've implemented. So feel free to check those out as well. And next thing we're going to talk about is the channel box and the layer editor. So if we, like I mentioned before, if we toggle between using control A, we can toggle between the attribute editor and the channel box. Of course, you don't see any attributes here because I don't have any objects selected, nor do you see the uh, channel box as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a polygon cube. And we notice now that the channel box now has a list of the translates, the rotates, and the scale for each axis. So if we move this along a certain axis or just move it in space, we notice that the channel box displays the information uh, as far as 
how many units is moved over in which axis, and the scale of it as well. So if we move down here in the inputs, and when you click on the, the polycube one, that you're basically clicking on the creation node. The same thing as going into the attribute editor and picking the P cube one, you can change this as well in the inputs. As long as you don't delete the history, then you'll have access to this information. But if you delete the history, then like this, then you'll notice that that information is gone and you no longer have access to the creation node. And so if we move our way down to the layer editors, here we have a couple of different options for, we're talking just quickly about the display and the render layers and the tabs. So if we select the object and we want to place it in the layer, we go to the far right side and we click it and we notice that the new layer is created we can double click on the name and just specify whatever name we'd like. Change the color. And the V is for visibility. So if you turn that on and off, basically we'll hide or show that layer. The box directly next to it has two different types of flags. One is the uh, template, which is for T, which you can see here. And template just templates that object so you can't actually choose it. And the R is for reference, so it keeps it shaded and you can actually see. Uh, but you notice that the lines become dark, dark gray or black, no matter what the layer color is set to. But as soon as you unreference it, then it will bring that information back. In the render tab, which we'll talk, of course, when we deal with renderings, uh, it's the same thing here. We can create different render layers where we can put different materials in each layer, different lighting. Uh, do occlusions and different render types for each layer. If you want to just add layers, you can click the second from the right. And here, if you do this, then you have to select the object and manually add it to this layer. You can, at the same time, delete the layer. If you're coming from another program, um, if, for example, if you use Rhino or any of any program like that, where the layer information, the layer is just a placeholder, so you can actually delete the layer and not delete the object itself. So we'll talk a bit more about that as well later. And that is it for the user interface. Um, next, we're going to talk about file setups and how to begin to organize your scene.